He like that though. Mac and cheese. I'm gonna take the trash shot. Look at these big old spiders. And I don't got no bug spray. So we're using. <laughs> What is this spider made out of? We are going to do devotional. It's day four out of the Jackie Hill Perry book. And the scripture is Psalms 22 and 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it says, while reading the psalm, I'm struck by how often God is questioned. Why he's allowing this, why he's forsaken that. Suffering makes you curious. And to me, it seems being inquisitive is in fact a healthy part of prayer. Even Jesus in his dying hour asked God a question. I'm not sure who taught us to deny God our questions. If I were to guess, it must have come from the elders of Israel who didn't want us to be irreverent. They knew God was a consuming fire who descended onto mountains that couldn't be touched. Every generation after them is just a stiff neck as they were and therefore prone to testing God like their soul wasn't on the line. <laughs> not stiff neck so I won't deny them the dignity of having good intentions but neither should we deny scripture's testimony regarding this subject godly people ask God questions and why shouldn't they his ways are not our ways his thoughts were not our thoughts the way God moves doesn't often align with our own logic since he doesn't share our nature or essence we run from pain. He uses it. We hide our enemies. I mean, we hate our enemies. He loves them. We try to hold on to our life with clenched fists, and he commands another way. The way of death, which somehow, some way, causes us to find the life we fought for or that we thought we were losing. Life with a transducent God isn't always going to make sense. And if it is the case, if... And if that is the case, questions will be commonplace. When our aversion um, to prayerful curiosity has lifted, I often wonder if we will discover what we withheld from God. And by what I mean our very self. Avoiding curiosity can be a luxury in some sense. To ask anything at all, you have to acknowledge your intellectual limitations but not only that to ask anything at all you have to sit inside whatever attention your body life and mind have brought about uncovering what hurts hurt thinking about whatever is unclear is frustrating if you decide not to ask god any questions regarding these things you can go on with your life maintain your sense of control and manufacture peace but to do that is to deny yourself the opportunity of giving god your whole self what if asking God questions is one way to cultivate intimacy with God? What if your questions became a door by which you could be vulnerable with Him? What if your questions opened up your mind to read the scriptures with fear and 
power expectation instead of apathetic drug what is this drudgery if in fact Jesus is the wisdom of God what if by asking questions you discover God and by finding God you find your answers and I know when I first started reading my Bible sometimes like she said I um like I questioned everything somebody told me so I was like oh you say this supposed to go on this is what it says so I'm like let me let me go read for myself so that did lead me to reading my Bible and and to um And close the back. But yeah, that did lead me to read my Bible and seeking God more because I'm like, okay, let me find out this for myself because I'm not just going to go off of what somebody has told me. And like, I do ask them questions and stuff. And sometimes, you know how like they say we're not supposed to ask God questions when stuff happens in our life. But I ain't going to lie, sometimes I do. But then I'll be like, okay, you know, you do, you're doing everything for a reason. I'm not supposed to question you and I just leave it at that. But sometimes, like she said, what if you questioning him, bring you to him? For like sometimes we ask, we ask God questions, and he'll give, he give you the answer if he feel like you need the answer. So maybe sometimes asking him stuff is not so bad, like she said. And then two, I forgot already. I don't know what I'm about to say, y'all. I really don't. <laughs> so I guess that's that. I guess I said all I needed to say. So that's the end of devotion. I end up taking a last minute cake order that I don't feel a cupcake order that I don't feel like doing now. So I guess I'm I gotta go put the cupcakes in the oven. And then I'm just chilling for the rest of the day. I'm not doing nothing today. I'm sleeping. I mean I'm since like three something this morning. You know, I wake up earlier and earlier every day. But yeah. I will see y'all later, I guess. About to walk to my mother's. I had a cupcake there. I bet she gonna say, "You always want me to try some of your stuff, but you don't try mine, my dear." I don't know what she told me. No way out. God, you think one king gonna paint three cheese? I let y'all play them one. Or two of them. Doing what? I ain't had no black paint. You don't want to take mine? I just said she's going to sit it there. Good morning, y'all. It is October 29th. I'm headed to 
Montgomery because I take boards tomorrow. So I got a friend that stay in Montgomery and I'm just gonna stay over his house until in the morning because I gotta take my test at eight o'clock and I didn't wanna have to get up come it's an hour and thirty minutes from Montgomery an hour and thirty minutes from where I live. So I didn't wanna have to get up and then, you know, try to be here on time. Cause you never know like what could happen in the span of a day. So I was just like, to keep my anxiety down, we gonna go ahead and go today. I was gonna wait and go after church, but my mama ended up telling me, since it's fifth Sunday, we don't have church on fifth Sunday. So I just got on up and came. You know, like I told y'all, love and wake me up at three o'clock every morning. So since I was up, I've been trying to go back to sleep. I couldn't, so I just got on up, got a bell. They're around like six something. And now I'm on my way. It's 8.01. So I got to stop and get gas, though. Because I stopped and got ice and put in my cup at the gas station at home. And I was like, wait, I don't normally get gas from at home anyway. But I'm like, well, since I'm going, I mean, since I'm um, here anyway, and I don't want to make no stops then I'll just go ahead and get gas on here. But they lights had went out and just came back on. So the thing for them to let you get gas wasn't working yet. So that was my dilemma. But since I don't have church today while I'm driving, I'm gonna listen to I'm gonna find me a sermon and listen to and then um I'll probably listen to the my Christian podcast that I listen to to make up for and I already read my um, scripture the other day because I got the Bible app on my phone. It comes to my phone. So, yeah, I will see y'all later. I'll probably check back in with y'all when I get to Selma to get gas. I don't know yet, but we will see. Oh, good morning. Happy Sunday. Be blessed. So yeah, we made it to Selma, getting gas. <sighs> Y'all, I'm saving. I ain't eating this since I've been up, cause I'm trying to save my food spaces for when I get up there so I can get some good. Cause I don't think I never really ate at a restaurant in my gum. So. Oh, and I want Starbucks, so. I'm gonna get me Starbucks for breakfast. <clears throat> and then, I don't know what I'm gonna do for lunch. Cause I'm gonna be up there. I'm gonna make it up there probably like, let me see how far long I'm gonna say I'll be up until I get up there. Mm -hmm. I could go and put your address in and now since we in. No, I'm gonna wait because then this thing gonna be making all that noise. <clears throat> I'm an hour and seven minutes away. Cause Selma probably like 30 some mile minutes away from Union Town. So yeah. <sighs> so I will see y'all sometime or another. Growing up as a child, she goes we are at Starbucks, guys. Starbucks, what can I get started for you? Yes, can I have a um, venti iced chai latte? A venti iced chai latte? With oat milk. With two pumps of vanilla. Okay. Two pumps of pumpkin syrup. Okay. And pumpkin cream foam. What else can I get for you, man? And do y'all have, um, can I get the turkey pro and provolone? No, ma'am, I'm sorry, we're out of those. Do you have anything with, um, turkey bacon? Well, let me see if I have any of the breakfast sandwiches left. Okay. Oh, here's 
Yeah, I can do one of those sandwiches for you. Um, which one can you do? The turkey bacon and egg white cheddar sandwich. Okay. That'll be out. All right. Crazy. Is what I do. Well, how you doing? All right. Okay. And I'm hot. So yeah, I just made it to my friend house. Feel like I'm in a little Airbnb or something. He got some good light. Mm. He probably gonna be fussing cause I'm cold. I could do on the heat on. Y'all, this room got some good light. I'm a little jealous. <sighs> but I'm about to do the. I haven't done my devotion today. So I'm about to do devotion. Hmm. <sighs> I don't know why. Well, I gotta quit saying why. Well, I don't know why I'm short of breath. But I already know why I'm short of breath. But I'm gonna do devotion. What day it is? Day five, I think. Yeah, we on day five. And when I get done reading, I just come back and tell y'all what it is. And I watch the podcast on the way here. I just tell y'all about all of it when I um get done reading. So yeah, I will be back. Oh, and I took your Paul. He probably gonna be cussing me out. Cause he already got two cars in his driveway. So I parked my mama car in the driveway. He gonna have to park side of the road. But I'm gonna be back, guys. Okay, so I just got done with devotion and this devotional was about it it spoke to me too because it was about how we make time for everything else but we never have time to pray and prayer is a major part of having a relationship with christ because that's how you talk to god the father and like she said we have so much to do like washing dishes washing clothes Working, tending to um, your kids, your husbands, and going places with friends. Like, we have time to do all those things. So, we make it feel like, okay, I got to do all this. So, I ain't got time to be praying today. But in reality, we make time for everything else and never make time for what we really need the time for. And she, um, I like how she said, there was no way in heaven or on earth. She talked about how in the Bible, how God stayed busy. I mean, Jesus stayed busy, but he always had time to pray to God. Even when he was on the cross, he was praying to God. And he, um, you know, he never had an excuse. No matter how much he had to do, he never made an excuse as to why he didn't have time to pray. And I'm going to read this whole passage. It said, there was no way in heaven or on earth that anything would ever keep Jesus from meeting with the Father. Time has never been a reason anyone doesn't pray. The heart is. Prayerlessness is almost and always a humility issue. The natural consequences of a heart that tends to believe it is good without God. Yes, you may be busy, but, it's, but it is possible that you are also proud. Pride is the true enemy of your prayer life. Pride deludes us into thinking we're self-sufficient, that our jobs supply our needs, our relationships 
provide comfort our intellect and ambition makes us successful but in fact everything you are and everything you have is because god reigns on the just and the unjust and like most of the time we only gonna go pray to him when we in need anyway and like when we feel like we got it all and we we life going how we wanted to go we forget to pray we forget to pray to him but you have to pray to him when times are good and when times are bad just not when you're going through things and because i think we tend to forget that once we get what we want and what we pray for that it was him that gave it to us and not us anyway and we should be praying through all those good times as well as just how much we call on him when things are bad so yeah we need to that was day five so we need to stop making excuses about why we don't pray. And um, I should have talked to y'all about the podcast and the car because I really can't remember even what I wanted to tell y'all. It's It was titled Focus on God. I remember one thing that he was talking about in the podcast. Um, he said his girlfriend had sent him a link. I mean, an uh, article, and the article was talking about how uh, it basically was like where the people, some rich people had a, a gathering and a baby shower, but the baby had already been born, so they had the baby shower when the baby was born. And, you know, they were so caught up into the celebration that they forgot about the baby until one of the guests asked, where's the baby? And the lady suddenly remembered that the baby was in the room on the bed, <laughs> and all the guests had took their coats and just throwed them in the room on the bed and the lady found the baby smothered under the covers and they were like often that's how we do with God like we we be so focused on um doing doing things and doing the works that we forget to even we <laughs> my friends have pulled up and I'm in his spot he gonna park on the grace but we forget to even we forget the reason why we're there. We go to like he said, we go to church and um go to conventions and stuff. But we forget that we get so wrapped up in everything else and seeing the people and all that. But we forget the real reason we're there, which is Jesus. And we end up I kind of com compare it to like when people go to church. You know how like your mind be on so many things, like you're there but you're not there and you're not celebrating the person that you're supposed to be celebrating, who is Jesus. So. I took that from it, and then he had said something else. Oh, it was about serving, I think. I don't know. But, um, if I think about it, y'all know I think about stuff late, so if I think about it, I'll come back and tell y'all. But yeah, y'all know I'm doing my devotionals out of the, the Jackie Hill Perry book. Devotional book is the Upon Awakening, and y'all, she wrote this devotional just like she. If you ever watch any of her videos, she wrote this devotional book just like she be talking in her videos and in her interviews. So that's part of the reason why I like it too. But yeah, so I'm not sure if his heat came on or not because I'm still cold. I mean, it's probably gonna take a minute because I doubt if he ever even used the heater. I was going to bring my little space heater, but I forgot it. So, yeah. I guess I'll talk to y'all later. And I'm not going to lie. I think I'm going to get some more food because I'm hungry. I ate. I ain't ate since yesterday. About six. Before I ate that little muffin from Starbucks. And it ain't did nothing. So, yeah. I haven't ate since, what, five, five or six o'clock yesterday. Probably earlier than that, because I went to bed early yesterday. Then I was back up at 3 o'clock, and I ain't ate nothing until I ate that muffin, whatever it was. And I'm still hungry. I ain't going to lie. So, I'm going to see what I'm going to do. But, yeah, I just want to come tell y'all, well, do devotion and tell y'all about it. So, I guess I will see y'all when I pick the camera up again. Okay, y'all, so I found this Jamaican place to eat at. And the review said it was in the hood. And it's in the hood. But you know I got my good good with me. Now me already scared. <laughs> it's called Yacht Bak. So we gonna see. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I want to get an order of jerk chicken, white meat. Small, large. A small. And can I? Uh, I want to do rice and beans and a salad. Plantain. You want gravy and rice and peas? Yeah, that's fine. Well, well can you can you do the um the gravy separate like in a little? Can you put the gravy in like a little container or something, or do it have to go on? Yeah, you gotta put it on the side. That's fine. Hey, one more. You want plantain or what else? Oh, you can do mac and cheese. Hi. Oh, you say your photographer? Oh, YouTube. Yeah, you do a YouTube. Huh? Oh, you do what you do? Um, I just do like, I got a, a vlog and I just vlog like my daily life and stuff. Oh, okay. That's yeah. nice. Okay, yeah, I just lived out the um Jamaican place and it was quick. I kid you not, it was real quick. And I feel like I, can get, I ain't looked in the plate yet. I want to wait till I get back to the house. Um, but it seems like they give you a lot of food. Because I, I thought I was getting plantains as a side. But apparently, I mean, it's an extra order. But I got a small order of jerk chicken white meat. And then I got rice and beans. And he did me a side of gravy. And it came with two sides. So I did. What else? I did rice and beans. And then I did macaroni. I think it came with something else. I don't know. I can't remember. But I just know it seems like a lot of food. I can say that much. But I'm uh, headed back to the his house. So when we get to the, I'll see y'all when I get back to the house so we can see what the food is talking about. I need to turn around. Lord, don't send the police because I'm going to do it, you we. Lord, the lady from the wreck in the van. And now she's pulling out on me. Come on, Babs. No, can they not drive up here? Jeez, Louise. But yeah, I'll see y'all when I get back to that. I need to focus because they can't drive up here. Even though I just did a U-turn in the back. <laughs> okay, y'all, we, we, we back and we got to try the food. This the gravy that's supposed to go on it, but I asked him and he put it in a separate container first. And mind you, the gravy come with the food. But he was like, yeah, you, I can, but it's gonna be 50 cents for the cup. Anyways. Chicken, white meat, mac and cheese, beans, and plantains. The gravy on the side, I want to taste the beans by themselves. Mind y'all, I never had red beans. I mean, I never had beans and rice. I never had plantains before, and I never had jerk chicken. But this is supposed to be an authentic chicken jerk place. So yeah. We're gonna try the mac first. It's good to be 
you know, like from a restaurant, it ain't gonna never be like my mama mac and cheese. But it could, I could tell they use some kind of like powder cheese, maybe. But it's good. I'm gonna try the plantain. The first time I had plantain, I ain't too much care for them. It kind of tastes like a banana. The first ones I had, I got them from a place in Tuscaloosa. I ain't like them. But I eat those. So let's try the rice. I need a spoon. Mmm. It tastes like something I've had before. I know y'all ain't gonna be able to see that me making no mess, so I ain't even gonna do that. No, with the gravy. Mm, this a piece of the meat. It good to me. It just tastes like a good piece of barbecue chicken. I can't really tell the jerk. But I can tell it ain't regular barbecue sauce. Man. Yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, I get this meal. An 8 out of 10. Mm hmm. And they talking about this is small, it look like they gave me a leg, they cut up a breast, and a wing. I wonder what the large look like. But yeah, I'm gonna eat and watch YouTube, and I will see y'all later. Yeah, he he'll burning up the chicken. Mm -hmm. What's you here burning up now? I don't know, baby. Oh, you got a knife back here. Your... says she can't raise her key out here. Huh? She can't. She can't. She says she can't raise her kid out here. What's your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have no gunshots out here. They were shooting. Man, don't tell her good at a good girl. Who? I'm asking y'all if they were shooting. No, nah, they weren't shooting. You just said she heard a gunshot. Oh, baby. Ain't that what you just said? Good morning, y'all. And y'all just gonna have to be yellow because there's the color on the light in this bathroom. It is 6 36 in the morning. Thank God the Lord let me go back to sleep. I, had to, I, I told y'all I had been getting up 
at like 3 o'clock every morning. Boy, he let me go back to sleep this time. Oh, Emmy was I scared to stay here high by myself. Sir. No, cause I went to sleep at 8 o'clock. I ain't even know I was in the world. But yeah, yeah, when I went to my boy for airpins, it like I was so nervous, but it like this time I ain't even think about it. <clears throat> Which is a good thing because I'd rather just not be thinking about it and be running around nervous like a chick with my head cut on. And y'all why I forgot my own my jail. So I got a hope and pray. Should have wrote a razor, but that's okay. Now I got a hope and pray that this day gone water gonna be enough. I got some got to be, but it's only lay a leg. That's just on my edges. But we're gonna have to make it work. We gonna have to make it work. And now I'm gonna make me speak so much. But um, what I'm gonna tell y'all, I don't know. I'll probably see y'all in the, I get in the car. I'm gonna just brush my hair up and spray the room back up that I slip in. And yeah, I'll see y'all in the car. What I got on. I'm gonna try to find somewhere, but I just got on a champion sweatsuit. Mm. But yeah. <clears throat> okay, y'all. So I'm leaving my friend's house now. I thought the place was gonna be like 30 some minutes away from here, but apparently it's only 12 minutes away. It's 7 on 9. My test not until 8 o'clock. But so what I'm gonna do is if it's taking me the way I think it's taking me, I'm gonna give me some breakfast and then after I get breakfast, I'm gonna just go sit in the parking lot because I gotta do my devotion for the day too. So that's what's the plan. And I'll probably go in the building probably like 7.45 just so I can be on time. I ain't trying to have none heat up into none of that. All I gotta do is take in that in my driver's license. I'm gonna have to take my gear off though. Why are they windows so far? Oh maybe I didn't have the defroster on. I thought I had it on. But yeah. So that's the plan. My word for the day just popped up. I'm gonna read it to y'all. It says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary in his understanding. No one can fail. Him. And that's just letting us know that we can go to God for anything. He not going to get tired of us for praying. He not going to get tired of us for asking him stuff. He not going to get tired of us coming to him and just praying. And he understands everything. So like I said, his understanding no one can fathom because God knows things we don't know. That's why when he deters us from doing certain things, we should be thankful because he knew something would come along that way that didn't need to come about for us or that probably would have harmed us and he saved us from it. So yeah, that was the word of the day. It comes from Isaiah 40. I mean the verse of the day. It came from Isaiah 40, 28. So yeah, I will see y'all when we get to Starbucks. I think I'm gonna get a monster this time. And I'm not gonna get a big one. I'm just gonna get a, um, a little grande and call it a day. So yeah, I will see you guys 
when we get to Starbucks. Oh, they working on it. So I got a matcha and a spinach wrap. Sriracha. Come on, Carlos. I need out of here. Come on. They be taking a wee little time. <clears throat> okay, we about to do devotion. It is 7.38. This is day six. The scripture is 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and see the new has come. To be called a new creature is a glorious, praiseworthy attribution. You of Christ is who you are in or new, as in different novel recently made. What is typical about you is that you have and will always be a creature, the only one who isn't God. Everything else is made a derivative of the eternal one. The fact you're a creature has never been the problem. The issue has always been your resistance to the submission of your creature. I don't know all these big words, Jack, if we've hit anything. The submission of your creature requires all things were made through him and for him. If you were made, then you were made for someone higher than yourself. The first human creature Adam ruined the concept for you. Original sin, as it's called, trained you to hate your maker and the limitations of being made. Your entire life, you tried with all your might to live independent of God, deny yourself of life with all the breath he gave. You thought the world was yours, your body too. Those delusions were natural to you. <clears throat> Darkness was your native country. But then, not because of anything you ever did, the spirit of God hovered over the land, your soul, the soil, and brought life from death, a grace. The impenetrable ground softened and opened wide. All that was without form and void took shape. Living water welled up into the empty spaces. A cloud of burdens lifted above you since they were only ever suitable for the sky to carry. Your eyes, <clears throat> your eyes, a sun now full of light, <clears throat> and a thousand invisible stars. Before long, the soil brought forth plants it only received and never planted. Each one came with the discovery of fruit, of love, kindness, gentleness, patience, self-control, joy, peace, gentleness, and faithfulness. The fruit was proof of your newness. Nothing and everything has changed. You are still a creature, but of a different kind. One that recognized your creator by name and gave him everything he deserved. The mind and heart you tried to to hoard, you gave back to the soul too. <clears throat> Why my nose ring? Your, your newness influenced how you saw the world and everything in it. Creatures look different. You saw them and you remember who made them. When they hated you love, when they were burdened, you took their clouds and carried them toward the sky. You even joined them in praise and prayer for the heaven you share and the hell you endure on the way. To be called a new creature is to see your name in Genesis narrative, but different from it is how you have had to begin. One, when you were born, the other way, when you were born again. And this new life has defeated death. That too is different in that it won't be the end of newness, but the continuation of it. The end of life will be a kind would be a kind of beginning on a new heaven and a new earth where nothing and everything has changed. So yes, that's the new devotion. Um my my preacher preached about that one Sunday about how once you um are you know you give yourself to Christ and you know once you start to live within him you are made new so all the old is gone and only new has formed so you have to give away all those old things because like I said, once you are within Christ, you are a new creature. And if you are new, you are not to be doing all the things that the old things, like the stuff he delivered you from and the stuff that you know is wrong. So yeah, <clears throat> it's 742. My test at eight, I'm about to go in here now. And we got this. <laughs> so I'll see y'all when I come out. 85 questions and done.
Y'all, I just got through. We didn't have the eight or five questions. We had uh, 140. Hello? Huh? Hold on. You can hear me? Yeah. What you doing? <laughs> oh, you did hear go to the doctor today. Mm-hmm. Sarah! I'm still sitting in the park and I ain't even pulled off yet. Girl, how many questions you have? More than you? How many? I had like 140. How you feel? No, what's wrong with the car? I mean, I feel good, okay. but you know, after you now like I feel anxious. Do the tree. I want to, but I'm scared. Cause then I feel like if I do the trick, do what I mean? Am I not waiting to trust on the Lord? <laughs> That's why I couldn't go early in the morning. Cause that was just gonna be too much. That was gonna be too much time that you gotta wait. When the screen turned black, I got scared. Forgot what number I was on. Fail. I said I thought they had the thing where you can um, where you can um. You be look cute. Hey, I wanna see how much this one is. Um three three four. Three two six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well look, hold on. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get two of these. I'm gonna put this one back. Play with so he thinks he's too grown. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some of your treats. Oh, I get them out myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they run. We're out of the store. Let me show y'all. I got this one. Bang them in the camera. Yes, I got those some treats, a pizza, and those. And I bought them this squeeze cheese. I had one toy at first. It was sixteen dollars. I'm like, I can get two toys for the price of one. Done deal. I could put this in here. <sighs> I'm like, where's your gun on home? It's like I'm gonna go somewhere, buy some, do something so bad. And I ain't got nothing to do but go home. But yeah, I'm finna do the trick, but I ain't do the trick. Like, I felt guilty in doing the trick anyway, so I was like, okay, I'm not going to do it. Then I was going to do it, and it was asking for too much and doing too much. So I just said, I ain't going to worry about it. Because when I didn't feel guilty about something, and then I kept trying to do it, it ain't working my favor no way. But we passed. We're claiming it. The Lord, he didn't bring me this far to leave me. And I wrote that on my, uh, like they give you a piece of scratch paper when you go in to take your test. And I wrote it on my scratch paper. I wrote, he will never leave you nor forsake you. 
they probably gonna be looking at my paper like, what's wrong with this girl? Should I get something to eat? I don't even think I'm hungry. I don't know. But yeah, I guess I will see y'all if I decide to stop somewhere else. barbecue place and if y'all can't tell I can't breathe I ain't even eat everything I tried to hide it cuz if you don't eat all your food it's a they gonna charge you $13 for not eat for what like if you get a lot of food and don't eat it they gonna charge you $13 because they can't put their food back after you done had it had it at your table and stuff <clears throat> which I feel is good so, I mean, I just got like three pieces of each meat I want to try because y'all know the meat real small and thin. <clears throat> but it was good. She recommended me to, um, what did she recommend? Um, I'm in Montgomery, by the way. Y'all should know that. She told me if I like spicy, I should get the tofu ramen. So that's what I got. And it had tofu a clam or oyster or whatever it was. It had that in there and it had imitation crab in it. So I got that. <coughs> I mean, I ain't even know it had that in there until she had brought it. <coughs> but yeah, it was good. And then I got, I had a piece of, I had whitening fish, um, whitening fish, some type of beef meat, and I had regular chicken and I had sweet, no, and I had spicy chicken, I think, for the hot pot. <clears throat> and it had like fried foods and desserts too, but I ain't even try to get all that cause I don't think you can like take none with you once you leave. So I went by the, uh, oh my. God. Yeah, I just got some good news. I gotta go back. I'm back. I ran in Walmart. Even though I saw I wasn't going nowhere else, but I ran in Walmart and um, got some stuff so I can redo my prayer board because it's falling apart. What I ran on? But I um got some stuff to redo my prayer board and I bought my little cousin on how she made like a taco. Yeah, I don't know KK. She just ain't been on here in a minute. But yeah, I had got some news and I got excited so I had to call y'all back. But yeah, I can't tell y'all about it right now. But I'ma tell y'all. 
when the time comes. But we headed home from Selma now. We made it to Selma, so I got like 30 more minutes before I make it home. Cause I would've been at home, but I stopped. I didn't want to stop. I'm telling the story, I wanted to stop, but who they got a thrift store over there? Ain't going. But yeah, I ain't got no more stops. Our roads lead to home. So we'll see y'all when we get home. Cause I'ma show y'all my prayer board now. And then I'ma show y'all, well I ain't gonna show y'all like, I don't know, we'll decide. But I'll see y'all when I make it to the house. Yeah, put it on the ground. Put it in the on the chair and put it. Who did your hair? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, wild it. What that is on your face? What a hair? Mm, what you been eating? Yogurt. <laughs> it look like. Well, get it back then. It look like what? It's a taco. I thought it was cute. Well, get here so I get my ten dollar back. Mm, Bring it here. Why you don't want it then? Why you don't like it? It look like what? It's like a taco, like well, like a cream bean zone. So you don't want. It. Hmm. You don't want it. I'll find somebody that want it if you don't want it. <laughs> you stressing me out. Huh. Carry that for me. Come on, natural shoes. I thought you were going to buy this some Nikes or something. Some Nikes? Girl. Who you going to say, Bubba? Huh? You going to say, Bubba? Yeah. I'm going to say he going to eat the cheese first. Come here. Hmm. Well, I don't know if it's cheese or not. <laughs> Bubba got cheese on his nose. Hmm. Look. He liked it. Oh, you get the... Oh, he <gasps> You were calling me? <laughs> hey. You were calling me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the truth. Mama! Like it? Cut You want some more snack? Uh, Go play with the uh, toy. Uh, uh, I can see my bubbles. <laughs> he liked that though. <laughs> We're decorating cookies. Let me show you. We ain't doing these kind of faces now. We just gonna do like these, okay? We gonna do the cute one, like this one. Did you say you wanna do that one? We ain't, we ain't gonna do no scary things. So it got the green stuff. And the black one. It's icing. It's icing. And the green one is icing. And two orange ones. Okay. And it has sprinkles, black and orange, and mm. what is what is it? Some mouse sprinkles. Yes. And it has cookies. Whoa. That's it, bro. It's just the squirrels. 
Yeah, at me, why is you judging me? You been, yeah, she been judging. She, she didn't want the shoes I bought her because she said she thought I was buying her some Nikes. Look, look at these shoes. What are those? What are those? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with these, y'all. I thought they were cute. And she took me some water. Let me put you back on. You some else, you know that. I'm gonna get to my foot. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna do you three. Let me see if I cut your thing on. I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show them. You don't want to see that. You don't want to hate me. Trip. How to feel like I'm always busy. One, two. Bussing, bussing, huh? On a scale of one to ten. One to ten. What you worried? I can't have ten. Toy ain't last five minutes. It cold like you. They already told it to Jack yeah. Mm. Ain't nobody finna rub you. Jack yeah. Make no sense. 